Oh, I can't I can't wait to start the show, guys. This is the live Monica Makes It Happen Facebook show, over 200 shows, and this is going to be my favorite show. I can already tell. But we talk about jobs, 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 and how to get a new job, how to upgrade, how to interview, how to navigate the great resignation. Oh, my gosh. There's so much to talk about, and we're so lucky. We love her. Vicki. So Lenny is here with monster.com. So you know we've got the pro with us. She is a pro to the hundredth degree. We just love Vicky. She's going to explain to us how to successfully land yourself a job in this current market. And we want you to ask your questions right now live. So if you're looking for a job, if you need to interview for a job, if let's say you're getting a side hustle because you can't afford to live in the city anymore, like so many of us. Vicky's here for you. And I'm, Vicky, thanks for joining us, first of all. Getting you is such a big coup here. <laughs> thanks for having me, Monica. It's always fun to be back. Yeah, and you're live, so we have you live. So ask the questions now that you really want to know. If you're looking for a job, is this a good time to look? Yes, there's never a bad time to look, Monica. I'm a former corporate recruiter, and I could say it's always a good time. And you know what's interesting is this time of year, people may think, okay, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to chill right out the holidays and look in January. But I like our thoughts on Monster is do the opposite. Like look now. And when I was recruiting, the candidates that took a break from job seeking meant the other ones that were looking and hustling for a new job were given more attention because the recruiters had less resumes to look through. Yeah, Vic, you're so competitive. I feel the same way. Like you got to always be, you know, hustling, right? You can't stop because nobody else is stopping. And Wendy on Instagram, thanks for asking your question. Is it okay to ask about salary during an interview? Yes, it is. You can ask what is the range for this job? And we can get into salary transparency a little bit later, but absolutely. And, you know, it's typically the elephant in the room. No one really wants to address salary, but you want to be cognizant of your time and the interviewer's time. You don't want to go through an entire interview process and at the very end get an offer you're super excited about and then realize it's basically like half the pay that you'd be um, willing to accept. So always know your worth. And yes, Wendy, absolutely, you can ask about salary. Always know your worth. It's That's a tweetable. That's a hashtag right there. Always know your worth. And let's, going right into this, the transparency law. There's this new salary transparency law. How can that help us if we're looking for a job right now? Yes, it can help create more equity. So if we're looking for a job, let's say New York City, it's a loss. It's been a loss since November 1st where job descriptions have to include the salary range, whether it's an hourly wage or an annual salary it has to include it. So if you're looking for a job, Monica, you will know going into it or even before you apply what the range is. And this could be a game changer for candidates. So this way, when you're asked during a job interview, what is your salary requirement? You know what a starting point is to go by. Yeah, I'm really hush hush about my salary. I was just saying, I was joking. My husband doesn't even know my salary. But um, Lisa Calm, salary, sa she says salary should be public record. Lisa, what do you think about that? Public that, record, Vicki. That is interesting. You know, some companies are transparent and have, you know, public record, meaning if it's to the general public or internal to the employees. But that's the interesting thing is companies, um, getting back to the salary transparency law, in certain states, let's say New Jersey, it's not a law, but we're noticing at Monster that many companies, even in states where it's not a law yet, are including salary transparency on their job descriptions. Jersey City is an exception because they do have an ordinance where they do need to include it in the job description. So it's a tight talent market. So it may be more commonplace in areas outside of the law. In New York City and Connecticut, it is a law, but New Jersey, it's not. So it's, I find it fascinating. My God, that is fascinating. You know all the little facets. Jersey City, okay, if you're watching in Jersey City, chime in right now. Now, ResumeBuilder.com says 85% of job seekers say they're more likely to apply to a job that lists a salary range, right? Yes, absolutely. And at Monster, we know that the majority of job seekers are saying salary is their number one thing they're looking for in a new job. So to not have it on a job description, I think companies may be losing top talent because Job seekers want to know the salary, of course. You want to know the responsibilities, the requirements, and you're looking for the right fit in that next opportunity. And salary is a big part of that. So true. It's all about the money, isn't it? <laughs> I think we can say that. Now, tips. How do we nail that job interview? I'm dying to see these. Yes. So many different things. Okay. First of all, and this also um, is for your resume. So you can highlight transferable skills. What do I mean by that? Because think about the soft skills that are hard for companies to train you, but they're so important and coveted by these companies. Customer service, empathy, leadership, listening skills. Highlight those on your resume and in your interview. Describe situations 
that demonstrate the fact that you um, possess these skills. Quantify things on your resume. So if you manage people, how many? If you manage a budget, what's the amount? Um, so you really want to get number specific. However, if you manage, let's say one person, you don't want to, you always have to be 100% honest. So you're not going to say you manage a team if it's one person. But if the numbers are not that impressive, then don't really quantify it. So if you manage two people versus 20, there's a difference. Keywords um, is the art of using different words on your resume to mean the same thing. Again, you're 100% honest and factual. I'll give you an example. So when I used to work in recruiting, so if I was applying for a recruiting position at a company on my resume, I would use the word talent acquisition. I would use recruiting, recruiter. I would use a variation of the word that means the same thing for the main reason is when you apply to a job, this is a little inside baseball, but you are all friends now. I want you all to know um, when you apply to a job, you not only apply to that specific job at the company, you're essentially applying to that company overall. So your resume becomes part of that company's database, which means you're searchable. So by using a variety of keywords that mean the same thing, other recruiters that you don't even know within the company may type, let's say, talent acquisition or human capital, and your resume will appear because you included that at least one time on your resume. Well, I love this inside baseball stuff. So, okay, use an executive summary. Yeah, it's at the top of your resume. It's like a one paragraph. It's a snapshot. Think of it, Monica, like a written version of your elevator pitch, like your skills, awards, accomplishments, and why they should hire you. Man, or something like that, a mission statement? Yeah, like a mission statement, oh, exactly. Yeah. All right. That, that You have to take a lot of time to think about that because sometimes it's hard to condense it in one sentence exactly what you what your mission statement is. But it does make you like, evaluate your life a little bit and prepare questions. What does that mean? Yeah. Come to the interview prepared. So you're interviewing them the same way they're interviewing you. Do your research. Ask about acquisitions. Where is the department going? What's the camaraderie? What's the teamwork? What's the culture like? Because you want to see if you're the right fit with them the, way they, the same way they're evaluating you. And don't be don't feel don't be afraid to shy away from it. You can ask them like, what are the training opportunities? What's the growth? What's the career trajectory? Even more specifically for our state of the college annual um, grads report at Monster last spring, we know, especially for grads, they're really looking for career growth and development. Oh my God, we're getting so many comments right now. The diva online saying salary transparency is long overdue. Sherry Connie says, I agree job seekers should know what to expect. Reza Rosa, thank you for watching. This should be a law in every state, not just in New York City. Uh, I wonder where she's from. And Marissa Jules, this is awesome because job seekers want to waste, uh, don't want to waste their time. That's so true. I mean, we don't want to waste our time. That's It's all about getting the job quickly and nailing that interview. So I loved your tips, especially the, the one about being honest and being um, and having your questions. And it is an interview just right back at them. You need to know what to ask them as well. I love that. I just love it. Um, now, talking about, you know, the negative part, let's just talk a little bit about that. I like to stay positive, but I've been hearing, oh my God, it's so hard to get a job. Is that true? I hear that pain from people, but you can still get a job and you may want to think about plan B. So right now is an incredible time to consider seasonal hiring, part-time jobs, holiday jobs to get your foot in the door to gain, you know, besides earning money, um, especially amid inflation, amidst inflation, but also gain new skills. At Monster, we know about one third of candidates or um, workers in our poll said they're looking to beef up their resume. They want to gain new skills, meet new people, gain new contacts. So oh, getting back to your question, Monica, you know, it depends what industry someone is in, but there are definitely jobs out there. Companies are still hiring and you may want to pivot temporarily to a plan B and that could open doors for you or you can shift shift that back to plan A. Um, but there are definitely opportunities right now. I love that. And specifically in the tech industry, we've been hearing about so many layoffs and this large interest rate hikes from the U.S. revenues declining, tech firms like Meta. Uh, Twitter, Amazon responding with these cost-cutting layoffs. It's so there is a lot of negativity, there, but I love how positive. You just ooze the positive energy. And that girl, Nat, says this is a landmark win for women and people of color. I feel like I've been underpaid most of my life because I didn't know what the range was and never negotiated. Wow. That's powerful. And I have to say, Nat, that it is really empowering to so many people. But you know, when I worked in recruiting, my hiring managers were more surprised when candidates didn't negotiate than when we, they did. So I think in the past, perhaps, you know, it was 
maybe people, job seekers have even told me now they feel uncomfortable negotiating, but it's really a right of job seekers to ask for more, even with this information on job descriptions. Definitely, you've, you've every right to ask for more. And when you're in the job as well, to ask for a raise and know your worth at all times. Now, if someone's feeling discouraged, okay, they were just recently laid off and they're watching, what do you tell them? Talk to them direct. Yeah, I do several things. First of all, take a breath because it can be emotionally an emotional roller coaster. And we get that. So just take a pause, take care of yourself, yoga, running, whatever you need to do to have that frame of mind so you can bounce back from this and you will. Um, so, you know, then the tactical tips would be prepare your resume, polish it this time of year, try to get to some networking luncheons, reach out to people, have meaningful conversations, dialogue, informational interviews, also to lift your spirits. Could be something that's not work related, maybe volunteer locally in your community, take an improv class, do something that keeps you active and engaged in the community where you're doing something where you're zoned out of the job sphere because ultimately that can come back to you um, in positive ways with great connections you're making just by being relaxed. But also you may wanna think about what skills you can acquire, even in the tech space. Maybe there's some coding certifications that you can get right now. And the thing about technology is, even though many tech companies have been laying off workers, every company pretty much has technology. So you don't necessarily need to be a tech worker to work for a tech company because e-commerce, we're seeing a lot of growth in the past couple of years. So there are definitely opportunities to think, okay, what are my skill sets? Where are the gaps? How can I fill those gaps? And a lot of times that could be gaining new skills, experiences, certifications, things like that. Okay, this is an important question. How do I stand out? How, if we're watching and we want to really stand out, you have that inside look because you used to be a recruiter in there. How do we stand out? Give us some tips. Yes. Well, you know, in person, online, when you apply all of the above, you always want to have an impeccable, um, polished presence. So that could be your social media feed, that needs to be your resume, your cover letter, and also be positive with your interactions with recruiters. If you get rejected, don't take it personally. Maybe it wasn't the right job for you. When I worked in recruiting, there were many times where I had to reject candidates, but or they rejected us. And they just said, you know, the salary is below what I'm asking for. But they kept things polished, professional, pleasant. They were people that we wanted to work with. And so oftentimes I would reach out to them again and say, oh, you know, that we didn't connect on that job, but there's a different one that may be, may be a, a good fit for you. So oh, I love because you just never know that that rejection may someday, they'll be like, oh, I really liked that you were really close. And so they'll remember you and they'll say, wait a second, you might be good for something else. And it's your reaction sometimes to what they say that will stick with them. Exactly. Or they might go to another company. Maybe you kept in touch because you built a great rapport. Now they work for another company and it's a year from now, December, 2023. And you're like, oh, wait a minute, I should reach out to them because they may have opportunities. And also it's how you can help other people so be that positive, pleasant, professional person. And in the meantime, you can perhaps attend in industry conferences, expand your network, be that memorable person who is positive. And also, again, like upskill, think about certifications, ways you can build your skill set so you can be memorable. But again, I can't emphasize enough spell check because so many, not so many, but I remember resumes that had typos and grammatical errors. And I was thinking, this is a detailed oriented role, if you're not detail oriented on your resume, I won't even talk to you. So you just want to make sure right out of the gate, things are as pristine as you can. And another thing I want to mention is own your time and set boundaries. So one way to stand out is to not, so if you get a call from a recruiter and you're in the middle of running an errand and you're like hopping on the train or something, you can say, I'm heading to a meeting. Can we schedule a time to talk? because you may be frazzled. You want to be focused. You want to have your resume in front of you as well as a job description so you can speak clearly and articulately. So it's okay to push back and just say, you know, can we please schedule time to talk? Wow, I could listen to you all night. I think it, if people are just joining us though, I want them to know exactly what we're talking. We're talking about finding your dream job during this holiday season. And we have monster.com here, someone on the inside that knows what bosses are looking for. So tell me again, is this a good time of year? Give us a recap of what we just went through, the highlights and what you want people to leave with tonight. Yes, stay positive. It's a good time to year, a good time of year to look for a job. Don't let December dissuade you. Absolutely look for a job. Continue looking, be persistent and consistent. And you may want to consider plan D, plan B, like a seasonal job um, for, for the holidays. 
I love it. And then, you know, just like you said, the memorable part, the positivity, and they'll remember not exactly what is that saying, what you said, but how you made them feel. And I feel like that's a big deal when it comes to interviews. It is. You want you to listen, have empathy, build a connection, build a rapport with them. And hopefully that relationship can carry through to the next round of interviews. One of the tips we didn't get to, which was, I think, toward the end there, you said, don't don't be too spontaneous. <laughs> That's what I meant with um, not necessarily taking the call if you're heading on the train or you're you're going to a doctor's appointment or something. Always want to be focused. And you can say, you know what? I'm in the middle of something. Let's schedule. But when are you free tomorrow to talk? Because I'll be available then. Well, Vicki, I have a feeling that a lot of people watching Facebook tonight are going to be hired. They're they're going to be hired and they're going to get jobs. And we're just so excited that you were here with us, Vicki, to help us through the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts. Because so many times the, the, the do's and the don'ts are more important than the do's sometimes. We don't even know that we're sabotaging ourselves from getting that dream job. Exactly. You got to be you got to be in it. You got to pursue and be consistent and continue to follow up. I love it. Okay. Well, Vicki, you're going to follow up, right? You're going to come back and see us sometime because we've got it. another show with you. And it really does sound a lot like dating. I was telling my producer that this is a job interview is very similar to finding your perfect match because you really want to be open to opportunities, but you also want to be very directed in what you want and you know your worth. Absolutely. I love it. And I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling very enthusiastic about this. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, monster.com. We love monster.com. Vicki Salemi, she's on the Pix11 news all the time. She was just on four, five, six. We are always on. And everybody, if you need us, we are here for you. Uh, not only making jobs happen, but making things happen in your homes and in your communities. If you know a community champion, reach out to us. Uh, we're making it happen four, five, six, and 10 every night. Don't forget to watch us. And if you want to reach out to us right here on Facebook, you can do that too. We're making it happen.